It all started because uh, UNICEF wanted to create a book uh, that they would send out to the participants from a 2002 conference. Uh, there were uh, children from around the world, uh, people who had been leaders in their community uh, or had stood out in some way, and uh, they wanted to report back to them with what had been done since that conference in 2002, what UNICEF had put into place, uh, and uh, kind of let them know that they had been heard and uh, that uh, they were, and also report on the work that those children had done since 2002. Uh, and this was in 2007, it was the five-year anniversary. They wanted it to be something that wasn't dry, they wanted to do something that was a visual story. We illustrated through visual storytelling stories from, I guess covering from war to healthcare to HIV and AIDS and the environment and education and poverty. Um, and we really told it from the child's perspective um, rather than dry numbers. I mean, these are very serious issues, obviously, that unfortunately these children are well aware of, but we illustrated it in a way that would appeal to children, that would gain children's interest, not just images or icons, but actual storytelling graphics that um, could kind of bring to light some of the issues in an emotional and real way. The artwork I did for UNICEF was, uh, it accompanied a story about uh, Ishmael, who was a war orphan. As a boy, he you know, carried a rifle and walked around the jungles, and the art itself was to capture the mood of, of what it's like to see children at war. What we ended up using for mine was a bunch of kids in the back of a, an army jeep with a huge gun turret coming out of it. It was kind of silhouetted against uh, orange, uh, sunsetty sky, kind of, kind of beautiful and sad. And also when we were talking to the people at UNICEF, the, the team that was handling this, they'd met all those kids before, so they knew them. And that, I think for the illustrators, that was a real challenge too, to try to match the personality of a real person to, um, to something that they're creating. And then also that that child was going to see this too, so they wanted to, they had that extra, you know, that sort of feeling that they really wanted to get it right because they knew that 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 child was going to see it too. This project was of an impressive scope. The children in 2002 who convened at, at the United Nations, there were 400 um, and some were as young as 10, but most were in their teens and they came from over 150 countries. So this project is really a celebration to remember that occasion and five years later give an update back to those children and also the new children um, who are in that age range. So this book is, is, has been published in four languages, English, Spanish, French, and Japanese, and it's being distributed worldwide um, to community centers and schools um, all around the world. In each country's allotment, they get to decide how to distribute it. And so hopefully, uh, students who are now in their teens will be reading this and seeing what their elder peers have done and will carry that torch. And so five years later, uh, there's this report and it has five ideas um, in conclusion for people to have a call to action. So five ideas to improve your world and what, what you can do one person at a time. So it's, it's a pretty amazing project to have been a part of. You know, there, and there's so many, there's, they're all just really poignant, strong stories.